about to meet people who haven't let the lack of bladder control keep them from leading very active lives. People who've used intermittent self-catheterization or ISC to free them to do virtually anything. Once I was able to cath myself, it meant not having to be around the house where somebody was around to help me or just being at my own house in my own bathroom. I could go out, I could do whatever I want and not have to worry about it. It was just an, a basic new beginning on life for me. When I first started to, to use self-cathing, um, I thought that it would, be, it would be difficult and it would be like this big important thing in my life always and I always have to orient myself around it. I don't have to do that anymore. I can, I can do it in my sleep in the morning when I've just gotten up and not even remember if I've done it or not. Hello, I'm Beryl Evans and I'll be talking with you about intermittent self-catheterization, commonly called ISC. I have multiple sclerosis which is a disease of the central nervous system. And as a result, I need to catheterize every day, just like you will soon be doing. I'm also a nurse, and I've taught many people how to do self-catheterization. At first, this procedure may seem overwhelming, but with a little practice and patience, you'll gain confidence using the self-catheterization technique. I felt very afraid when I found out about self-catheterizing. I didn't realize what freedom it was going to give me. But at the time, I just thought about what I was doing to myself, and it seemed like an unnatural act. I had a very hard time getting past that psychological point. It wasn't the, the pain, because once I could make myself relax, it didn't hurt. But it was pain of thinking about it. And once I got by that, it was easy. This video will help you to fully understand why, in your case, your doctor has recommended intermittent self-catheterization, or ISC. We'll discuss how the urinary system works, the reasons that ISC can become necessary, and of course, how to do intermittent self-catheterization. First, let's look at how the urinary system works. The urinary system is made up of five major parts, the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, the sphincter muscle, and the urethra. Kidneys filter waste products from the blood to produce urine. The urine flows down tube-like ureters into the bladder. The sphincter muscle acts as a valve to allow the bladder to store and release urine. The bladder signals the brain about every three to four hours when it's full. When it's convenient, the brain signals the sphincter muscle to relax. The urine is released and it flows down the urethra and out. If your bladder, sphincter muscle, or messages to and from your brain don't work correctly, your bladder won't empty properly, which can cause urinary problems. If your bladder doesn't drain completely, it can become overfilled and distended, causing loss of muscle tone and urine leakage. The residual urine can stagnate and allow bacteria to grow and cause infection. Finally, urine can back up from the bladder, through the ureters, and into the kidneys. This is called reflux, and it can result in kidney infection, scar tissue, and even permanent kidney damage. Intermittent self-catheterization is a safe and simple way to completely empty your bladder on a regular schedule to help prevent many of these problems. It is also a way for you to take charge of your own health care. I go hiking in the woods and uh, I just look for a big tree and run around behind. I play golf. I always carry my catheters with me. I uh, go folk dancing and there's always restaurants around so there's no problems. Self-catheterization is a painless procedure that involves inserting a hollow plastic tube called a catheter into the urethra, past the sphincter muscle into the bladder. Urine then flows through the catheter and the bladder empties. The catheter is removed when urine stops flowing. In order to be effective, self-catheterization needs to be done on a regular schedule, paying close attention to cleanliness. 
It can be done anywhere. You have all your supplies and a little privacy. It doesn't stop me from doing anything. I bicycle, I row, I swim. Um, I just put my catheters in my briefcase. And I, I have some KY jelly or surgery lubes that I carry around with me. And it doesn't get in the way. Nobody needs to know. It's my private thing. It's just like when you go to the bathroom, it's a very private act. So is my catheterization. No one really needs to know about it but me. You may have already been catheterized while in the hospital using what is called sterile technique. This technique requires gloves, a mask, antiseptic, and sterilized equipment. However, this technique is not usually necessary when you learn to self-catheterize on a regular basis. Actually, the reason sterile precautions are taken in the hospital is to avoid cross-contamination of illness and infections from patient to caregiver and patient to patient. Since this isn't a concern when you do self-catheterization, there isn't any reason to use a sterile technique. You just need to think clean when doing your routine, and we'll teach you what that means in a few moments. Let's talk about what supplies you'll need to do your catheterization. First, you'll need a dry hand towel or paper towels to dry your hands after washing. Also, some mild soap and water or a moist towelette to wash your hands before and after catheterization. You can also use either of them to clean the area around the urethral opening, called the meatus, before inserting the catheter. Next, you'll need a supply of catheters. There are two basic types of catheters, a straight catheter and a coup de tip catheter. While the straight catheter is just that, straight, the coup de tip catheter has a slight bend in the insertion end. Your doctor will prescribe the style that is appropriate for you. Catheters can be made of a variety of materials, such as rubber or plastic. Catheters are made of clear, non-irritating, medical-grade plastic for ease of insertion and visibility. Catheters are measured in French units, which simply refers to the diameter of the tubing. For example, the most common size of catheter used by adults measures 14 French, while a 5 French is commonly used for infants. Catheters range in size from 5 French up to 30 French. Your doctor or nurse will tell you which type and size of catheter is right for you. water-soluble lubricant is used on the catheter to make inserting it easier. Many brands are available, but remember, it must be water-soluble. You'll need to either use a toilet or have a receptacle available to catch the urine. If you're not near a bathroom, a leg bag, night drain bag, empty milk carton, coffee can with a lid, or a sealable plastic bag will do fine. Just be sure the urine ultimately ends up in a toilet or proper waste disposal system. Now that you know what you need to do your catheterization, let's go through the actual procedure and see what's involved. First, gather all your equipment together. Soap or moist towelette, catheter, lubricant, a dry hand towel or paper towels. If you're not near a toilet, have a container for the urine available. Wash your hands thoroughly with warm soapy water or the towelette and dry them. If you use a disposable towelette, throw it out and use a new one for the next step. Now get comfortable. You can stand in front of the toilet or sit in a chair in front of the toilet. With one hand, if you're able, hold the penis. Wash the tip of the penis to the base of the glands with soap and warm water or moist towelette. Wash in a circular motion, starting at the opening to the urethra, called the meatus, and working out. If you are using towelettes, use each one only once, then discard it and use a new one. Apply a thin coat of water-soluble lubricant to the first six inches or so of the end of the catheter you will be inserting. Now, if you're able, hold the penis straight up from your body at a 60 to 70 degree angle. Slowly and gently insert the catheter into your urethra until urine begins to flow. Now insert it just a bit more and hold it there until the urine flow stops. Once the urine flow stops, slowly withdraw the catheter. 
slightly rotate the catheter as you remove it. If more urine flows, stop withdrawing the catheter until the flow stops again. Take a quick look at the urine. If it's a different color than usual, has a foul odor, or is cloudy, let your doctor or nurse know right away. You may be able to catch a developing infection early for treatment. You should also let them know if you have pain or burning when you insert the catheter or while urinating. If there's blood in the urine, if you run a fever, have chills or back pain, or can't seem to get the catheter into your bladder to empty. In order to help prevent infections, talk to your doctor or nurse about the proper procedure for catheter cleanliness and replacement. In any case, never use a catheter that is rough, stiff, worn, discolored, or damaged in any way. It's a good idea to keep a supply of catheters at work, at school, or any place you visit often. Your doctor or nurse will set up a schedule with you for how often to catheterize. At first, you may need to keep a record of how much urine you obtain each time you catheterize, so you can adjust this time schedule to prevent your bladder from overfilling. Usually, self-catheterization needs to be done every three to four hours, but the most important thing is not to let your bladder get too full. If you feel restless, are perspiring a lot, have chills or a headache, or just feel very full, it may mean it's time to catheterize, even if it's sooner than your scheduled time. Try to drink eight eight-ounce glasses of liquid a day, preferably water, to ward off infections. Your doctor may advise you to drink more during the day and less after supper, just to help you keep dry at night. And steer clear of too much caffeine. It's a known bladder irritant. I wash myself off very thoroughly. I wash my hands. I use sterile equipment. I drink lots of water. And that's something that at first I had to make myself do, but now I just automatically drink water. And I've never had an infection, not since I've started catheterizing. You may wonder if self-catheterization will affect any of your normal activities, including your sex life. On the contrary, it allows you to be more independent, active, and confident. It's just a good idea to empty your bladder right before and after intercourse. You don't have an indolent catheter that you have to work around, and you don't have a leg bag or a bed bag that you have to worry about, and you don't have, you just go, go catheter yourself and that's it. I went for, for months without having sex when I had an indwelling catheter, and it really, I, that's what inhibited my life. But once I started self-cathing, I could have sex again. And that's another freedom, just another plus of self-catheterization. By the way, some medications can have a negative effect on a successful self-catheterization program. So alert your doctor to all prescription or over-the-counter drugs you may be taking. If you are in a wheelchair, extension tubes can be used to allow you to stay seated while emptying your bladder into the toilet. So, that's what's involved in doing self-catheterization. It's a new skill to be learned, and we hope this video helps make this procedure an easy new part of your life. I was a little bit nervous at first, and I talked to a friend um, who I really look up to that has multiple sclerosis as well, and she said, it's no big deal. So I figured if she could do it, I could do it. It isn't something that you have to think about. It isn't something that you have to orient your life around. It, it can just be as natural as brushing your teeth. It's just, it's just something that's there, and you, after a while, you won't even know. You won't even think about it. Just relax and know that your worst fear is just being afraid and you don't need to be afraid. Once you get past that and over that hump, it's all easy time.